Yeah, fellas, I'm back. I was in the middle of uh, talking about something in the last one, uh, the homosexual agenda. This brother's writing in uh, uh, saying, what's up, Supreme? I heard you talk about the homosexual agenda and its attempts to feminize young males. To me, this photo proves what you're talking about. I took this picture as I was leaving the gym yesterday. It's a poster, a poster, a poster, you said poster, bro. I said poster went, because you put it there. It's a poster in the lobby of the gym. Sorry, it, it is tilted. The computer won't let me turn it. I know that you were mainly talking about feminizing black males, and I'm actually, they've already gotten to you, your race there. He goes, I'm white. But keep, but keep in mind, this is what's going on inside Georgia State University campus gym. Georgia State is very diverse with African Americans. Yeah, I know, Georgia State. Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia is, is a very good state for African Americans, for black folks. Uh, with African American, Caucasian, and Asian people with 36,000 plus students. Damn, it's a big campus. I thought this uh, may be something you'd like to share in the show. And here is the poster. Lunch and learn experiences of being an out and gay college student. And it's posted in the gym. Um, I wouldn't say that's part of the gym. That's part of their reaching out to people who are closeted, who haven't stepped out. But, and those kind of people, they're, they're the ones, you know, they're not comfortable with themselves. Uh, they have like a real negative vibe when you get around them. So, but that is part of, you know, they're reaching out. They're, they're in the past, when I was growing up, you didn't hear a word about homosexuals. I used to watch the show uh, Lost in Space when I was a kid, growing up. Loved it. I never even realized that Dr. Smith was a flaming homosexual. Just ass on fire. Until I got to be an adult and I just happened to, you know, this is back in the uh, late 80s. And I happened to see the show again. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't realize the fucking... You know, all these people that were homo like homosexuals... Um, you ever watch a Hollywood Square? There's one flaming one on there. Actually, a couple of them. You didn't realize that, you know, wearing the ascots. I even saw the original Batman wears an ascot. And that was like one of the signs of homosexuals in Hollywood. But they wear them goddamn ascots. And I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't know. But when I was a kid, you didn't see it. I feel sorry for you guys. Uh, you were, he was having some problems with this, you know, homosexuals trying to communicate to each other out there. Unfortunately, we live in a different age, different time, which I have come to finally accept. But, you know, I, I, I can see them trying to reach out to people who are so they don't kill themselves and do all the, uh, you know, other kind of stuff and help them feel comfortable themselves. Now that we understand that, you know, in, in males, they, as they, they said, they found the gene for males. Now, whether that gene gets turned on, turned on or not, they, I think there's still something to do with nurture, you know, that environment thing. Uh, a lot of males, to my knowledge, a, a, a large uh, number of males, because I did some research on it, uh, it was through uh, molestation as a child. Uh, in my own life, I was trained to fellow. He looked like a normal dude. You know, I thought he was, I thought he was a normal dude. But he ended up being a homosexual to like big bear men. And it was because when he was a little boy, his father uh, became a paraplegic. And one of his father's best friends started using him for sex. He was like a big burly guy. And that's what he gravitates to. That's just one example. You know, it's not the kid's fault. Um, the Mac makeup artist that I, I used to I dated for like eight years, her f biological father was homosexual. Her mother looks like she should be a, a lesbian. Um, and he was homosexual because uh, he was raped in an alley. But he killed the guy. But he, he switched over to homosexuality. So there is something to that whole nurture thing. But there is also something to the whole genetic side of it. A lot of uh, males, like my one buddy who's the ex-Panther, he, you know, he believes that, you know, it's just fucking two weak motherfuckers. One weak motherfucker preying on another weak motherfucker. And that's what does come out a lot, a lot of times. But I think, you know, if the person has the gene in, within him, that's what gets activated, though, okay? Like, I could never sleep with another dude, okay? Never. And I think 
the people that have that gene, there's that potential there. The, I even looked at, you know, how it, it determines, is it determined by the amount of uh, testosterone released into the womb and the fetus. I, I've read a lot of that stuff. Done quite a bit of research on it. Uh, the ones I feel sorry for are, are transsexuals that uh, her, her son likes. Um, I, I, I watched a program on those guys, and uh, apparently they have a brain stem. We, us males are like that long, and women's like that long, and transsexuals almost the same length as women. That allows them to feel emotions. And, and it would be terrible. I'm not trying to be some soft motherfucker, but, you know, I thought, thought about it, you know, I said, they, these guys, at early age, they say they're in the wrong body. So I started thinking about this. This is many years ago, before I really start teaching on the forum. Um, I thought, you know, I, I got metaphysical with it. I thought, okay, I know that in metaphysics they believe that souls are returning back to Earth much faster. There's a faster turnaround rate because we have more people. So they're like back in real fast. So I started thinking, okay, what if the soul came back into the body and it still has carries the energy of whatever sex it was in the last body and it hasn't been able to drop that totally. When that energy comes that soul comes into the body, it changes its energy. Energy changes the DNA. And it, it, it'll cause that gene to develop or whatever that gene to activate. I started theorizing all this stuff. So I realized, okay, then it's not these guys' fault. So I finally came to, to, to grips with it, but I don't like their agenda. I don't like them pushing that fucking agenda on the rest of us males. They cannot get converts unless you and I breed. They need us breeders to, to stock up their larder uh, of ass. Okay? So without us, they die out. They're, they're dead end. We create growth. They are the opposite. For every thing, it has its opposite. Okay? For masculine, we have feminine. So they're just the duality of, of normal sexuality. Because we've got to look at it from energy standpoint also. Okay? So that side of the fence is, you know, the opposite of this side of the fence, you know. Uh, we put a, a plant into the soil, and it grows. The, the power of life speaks to it. And, and tells it to, to multiply. As within us, that energy speaks to the cells in our body and tells us to multiply, which creates our desire for women. That's where your original desire comes from. It's not because you see a, a big booty, if you're black, you see a big butt, or, or if you're Caucasian, you see, you see a slim, uh, now it's the bubble butt girls, you know, with a beautiful face, blonde hair and blue eyes. It's not because of that, okay? It's because of the energy of life speaking through your cells to your body. It's when that energy gets up to your mind is when it changes and all your, you know, what's, what you like comes out. That's why we see people with weird quirks. Uh, there's one fellow that just liked pregnant women. I don't know why. There's a lot of guys I've seen... When I was in porn back in the 90s, and I was looking at porn back in the late 90s and early two, like two, 2000, somewhere in there, you know, um, I saw that stuff online. You know, uh, people were into, like, pregos, they called them. Who? But I guess they need to feel, feel like, you know, the life inside there. Maybe it attracts the life force. Like, you know, that, some kind of vampiric thing. They feed off the life force. Of the I don't know. I don't understand. But there's some people that, that you know, they like kitties. Really? I don't... There's nothing attractive about a child's body. Someone posted on my Facebook uh, a young child and said that it was, uh, I think it was a boy, too. Or maybe it was a girl. It was beautiful. And, you know, I, I found offense to it, but I didn't, didn't, didn't say anything. Well, actually, I asked me, you know, what the fuck? And then I, then I just shut up. So, but it comes out in weird ways, you know? Or different ways uh whatever your your beliefs are your your what's inside your head that's what shapes your 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 transmutation of that energy okay 
So for those guys, they're the opposite of us. We're the people that create life because we have that natural instinct to to be with our opposite. So and by the way, what draws you is the is the instinct to procreate. Yeah. That's what what's behind the desire. And a lot of women are very very well t in tune with their inner nature. That's why they're always looking for a relationship. Their biological clock is ticking, as I've talked about many times before. These girls that go to the clubs at 21, 22, they're having fun. 23, their body's speaking to them. It's been speaking to them since the time they hit puberty, but the, that voice gets louder, that instinct just gets louder. By the time they're 25, their, their hormones are on fire. They, their their bio bodies are biologically screamed at them to produce. Okay? By the time they're 30, by the way, their mothers look at them, their, their dads look at them funny, why don't you have kids, Where, what's wrong with you, what's going on here, you know, their friends, they're all getting married, and there they are at 25 years of age still trying to party it up in the clubs with no children. So anyway, sorry for the long lecture on that, let me go on to our last piece of mail from Stan. What up, player? Really appreciate you responding to my messages. Oh, you're welcome there, Stan. You have really helped me understand the game. I'm not a nerd or simp. I was a football player in high school. It always got compliments on my physique, which you misspelled, my brother. I was... I'm just fucking with you. Uh, this, you don't have to be... Uh, I'm not a grammar nerd. I, I hate those grammar nerds, by the way. You know, the, but they got that quirk in the head. You know, when they see like you know, dot your eyes, it fucks up with their minds. The minds wrap so fucking tight. They're fucking creepy and weird. They got it. They get all ah. I'd run to a few of them. Okay. I feel sorry for women that got to deal with them. I was the smallest strong guy on the team, 155, benching 235, and that's a damn good weight. Even though I had this look, and females looked at me, I still didn't approach the girls that were choosing. Instead, they approached me, but even when I did get girls back to my spot, I could never seal the deal because of awkward moments, basically waiting uh, too long to make a move. Uh, that's usually lack of co inner confidence and letting your balls flow, okay? You know you want her. Go get her. Be a man, right? I think you've learned that. Let's see what's going on here. I still get nervous approaching girls that I see choosing me on the train or at school I work at. Uh, do you think I should get the confidence program? I didn't think you should. And can you give me some advice on what moves to make when I get a girl to my spot? Yeah. Let's give you a, a routine. I don't like routines, but let's give you something to do. Okay. When she comes into your house for the first time, if it's the first time, uh, you want to take her by hand. Hey, let me show you around the place. Take her by the hand, you know, take her to the kitchen. This is my kitchen. Uh, this is my bathroom. You probably live in one bedroom. Uh, uh, and then when you get to the bedroom, you know, step in the bedroom first and, you know, jerk her arm and then turn around and kiss her. That'll set the stage. After you get that first kiss, it's a done deal. You ain't got to drag her in the bedroom bone there, you know. Kiss her for a little few minutes and if you guys are making food, go out there and make some food and keep kissing her, you know. But make that first kiss. Make that first, that first intimate contact. That's all you got to do. I remember when I was young. I was scared to do that first kiss, okay? I was like the rest of you guys. You know, when do I kiss her? So I kiss her now, and she ain't gonna let me off. God, I gotta do it. I do it that, that exact same shit. And it gets easier the more you do it. So recognize that your first few times, you got a growth phase. Your first few times are gonna suck ass, okay? You might suck at it. You might fuck up. You might not do it right to where you feel comfortable. You make her nervous and... Okay, accept that, but you got to get over that, that break-in phase, okay? The, the, the more you fuck up, the better you'll get, actually, because you improve. You'll, you'll get smooth. you get confident, okay? All right, fellas, that's our show for the day. Peace.